Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is December the 13th in the year of our Lord, 2017. And this is one a day for the soul. Now we're continuing our study in the book of Romans. And I want to slow things down just a little bit. And the reason for this is I think it's necessary to explain the difficulty that we have getting our minds around these simple truths. You see, in our human nature, we are inclined toward knowledge. And we think the more knowledge we acquire, the deeper things get. But in the kingdom of God, it isn't what we learn that becomes deeper, but it's what we unlearn that becomes deeper. Now, if you're following along with us in reading the book of Romans, if you're wrestling with this book, which you should be, then you can see that Paul is going to great effort to explain these simple truths. And even Paul himself has a difficult time in foregoing everything that he has learned, all the knowledge that he has acquired to stand upon these simple truths. And that's why it seems like he's hammering out the same thing over and over because our mind is in a knot of information, information overload. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to untie that knot. And that is very difficult for us to do. It was true of the Jew and it's true of the Christian. And what it basically all boils down to is the motive. What is the motive of the Jew in obeying the commandments of God? And what is the motive of the Christian in obeying the commandments of God? You see, Jesus told us, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. And yet, because we are a people of grace, we give little attention to obeying the commandments. Not just the commandments that are given in the first covenant, the Old Testament, but the commandment of perfect surrender, absolute humility taking on the character and the nature and the person of the Lord Jesus in every aspect of our lives. You see, if we do that, all the other commandments will take care of themselves. And so learning who Jesus was by reading his story through the New Testament and then bowing humbly before the Father and asking that we would take on his person that the light of Jesus would shine from within us and that people around us would see Jesus through us, that is the greatest goal that we can strive unto, friends. Now, we read a couple of days ago that Peter himself, one of the closest followers of the Lord Jesus, he was in the inner circle of the 12, meaning the three, Peter, James, and John. And it seemed when something very significant took place in the ministry of Jesus, it was those three who were invited to observe. And so we know that they had special knowledge, special revelation, special truth that was given to them from the Lord Jesus, and yet Peter himself finds it difficult to understand what it is Paul is saying. And so Paul is going to conclude here in chapter 3, which is where we're going to pick up today, in verse 27 by saying, where is boasting? If a man is not justified by his works, then he cannot take pride or glory in his works, in himself. And that eliminates all boasting. Look at what I have done for God. This makes me a righteous person. That's boasting. And Paul says, because of this truth, there is no boasting. It has been excluded. By the law of works? No, but by the law of faith. Now notice, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, when we become followers and servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and we are born again, we lose the old nature and we take on a new nature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. When we're submerged, baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that we have done to deserve what we have received. But at that moment, a life of obedience begins. That's why James, and you'll notice that it is all the writers of the Bible that are wrestling with the same truth. James says, you say that you're a good man because of your faith, but even the devils have faith. Even they believe in the Lord Jesus to a point that they tremble under that knowledge, which most likely you have not done. And so what makes you any different from them? It is your obedience, your surrender to the will of God, practicing the things of God. And that's why Paul says in chapter 3, verse 21, which is where we'll begin our text this morning, the righteousness of God or a person being in right standing with God without the law is manifested. Why? Because it is Jesus who makes us right with God, the free gift of salvation, not based upon anything that we have done to earn it, but because we recognize that there's nothing that we can possibly do to earn it, we receive it gratefully and freely, knowing and realizing that it is a gift from heaven. And this was witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, that which brings us into right standing with God, which is only through faith in Jesus Christ. And it is unto all and of all them that believe. For there is no difference between Jew or Gentile. For all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we have been justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus alone. It is he who God has set forth to be a propitiation or a reconciliation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission or the forgiveness of sins that are past through the forbearance or the patience of God. And he did this that in this time his righteousness might be just, and it might be the justifier of him who believes in Jesus. So where is your boasting based upon your works? It is excluded. By what law? Works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith or the Jew by faith and uncircumcision through faith. And this is where the perplexity begins, friends. The Jew by faith is seeking justification, the Gentile through faith is receiving justification. Our journey begins with Jesus at the moment we surrender to his lordship, his kingship. We deny ourselves and he becomes our number one priority in life. And that being true means we're going to strive to do all that is important to him, all that he has commanded us. Now, notice this, because this is true, do we void the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law. Why? Because faith without works is dead. And so faith is the initiator of obedience. And this is so subtle a truth that it is very complex for us to get our minds around. And Paul understands that, being a very educated man, probably the most educated in all the writers of the Bible. And yet he understands the deeper things of God are the simple things of God. But because our minds are so complex, we overlook the simpler things, 
thinking the more we know, the more favored we become. And while that may be true before men, it is false before God. Remember, it was Jesus who said, those who are highly esteemed before men are an abomination before God. And that's why Paul is giving such great effort in simplifying things, but even in simplifying them, they're very complicated for us. And I felt it was important this morning to just take a few moments and try to clarify this issue because in the next few mornings, we're going to be spending much time on this topic because Paul is going to approach it from many different angles, hoping that for each of us, one might click, one might make sense, one might make a light go off, and for each of us, what it takes for that to happen might be different. But ultimately, the goal is that we get it. And so as we close today, let us remember the fact that there is nothing that we can do, have done, or will do to earn the precious gift of salvation that is offered unto us by and through the Lord Jesus. It is a gift, friends. And let us receive it with gratitude, with humility, and in having received this most precious of gifts given unto men, let us now ask the Lord and consider very carefully what we must do with it. What is its purpose in our life? Is it a gift that is to remain wrapped, sitting on a shelf? Or are we to unwrap it and now use it as it is intended for his glory, his honor, in his praise. For once again, as Paul tells us in verse 28, we conclude that a man is justified by faith alone without the deeds of the law. But in verse 31, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law. And so Paul is saying we conclude that the law kept in priority is vital to the Christian faith. But one can never boast before God about what he has done because our salvation is found in Jesus alone and through what he did for us on Calvary. I hope, I truly hope this helps us better understand the message that Paul is seeking to relay through this letter and that we will learn to walk both in the spirit and the liberty that is found in Jesus Christ. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're here with us this morning. I pray that your journey will be blessed today and that truly in all things, you will bring your king much glory. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.